In the mid-15th century, Johannes Gutenberg introduced the printing press to Western civilization, a device that single-handedly changed the structure of society forever by paving the way for mass communication. 3D printing business owner Scott Phillips believes the technology could spark a similar revolution. Well, I believe there is a, a revolution happening around 3D printing. Um, people are talking about it as a, a new industrial revolution, um, which you can you know, label digital manufacturing or digital fabrication. So um, what digital fabrication does, 3D printing, is that it really gives um, people generally the ability to manufacture, which is something you know, quite new in, in human history. printers have been around since the 1980s. So what has suddenly changed? For Bernard Mead, an innovation and outreach officer at the University of Melbourne, the recent increase in accessibility to the technology is the real revolution of 3D printing. The technology has been around for quite a while, so in terms of it being a revolution, quite a lot of the things that we already use were prototyped with 3D printing and we've just not been aware of it. What's really become, uh, what's really changed is that this technology is now becoming available to the everyday user, to hobbyists, to um, people at home. They can actually now buy a printer or build a printer themselves and start producing these sorts of things. Three-dimensional printing, also known as digital fabrication or additive manufacturing, makes it possible to turn 3D model designs into custom physical objects on demand. But how does it work? How easy is it to go from idea to object? 3D printing is also called additive manufacturing. An object is sliced up into very fine layers, essentially two-dimensional projections, and then placed one, to one on top of another. If you imagine putting a piece of paper through a laser printer, the toner gets put on the, the paper. If you put that same piece of paper through and printed that paper again, eventually it would just start to build up. So that is the concept behind additive manufacturing. In order to better understand the process, we're going to watch Scott use his 3D printer to replace a damaged component in his 3D body scanner. So it's designed to fit into, into this structure here. And, um, and hopefully my my yellow version will slide a bit more easily through here. This one's a bit stiff. Um, and it's had one of the clips broken off it. The first task for Scott in creating his 3D printed object is to create a digital image of it on his computer. Broadly, there are two ways he can do this. The actual construction of this digital form can be in CAD software, computer-aided design, or it can be captured from real-world objects using scanning. So there are scanning technologies available that uh, range from using your iPhone to scan a real object through to uh, high-end laser scanners or LiDAR scanners, or even aerial photography uh, can be used uh, to create 3D objects. In this case, Scott used CAD software to create the digital form of the object he wanted to manufacture. There's a couple of different categories of CAD software that you can use. This is an example of, um, of parametric software. Um, and, um, and this is based on a, basically a sketch and extrude kind of method. So here we can see the sketch that's been used to, um, to create this, um, this section of the object. And um, I can quickly get in and I can fiddle with the, the values of this if I want to, which I don't at the moment. So I'll exit out of there. Um, and I'll exit the sketch and that shows then how I've um, extruded this, this section out. And, um, and in fact, I can just go down here and I can, um, can roll forward the, uh, the changes that I've made. So this is all the complete object and I'm just um, rolling back through the, the, um, the processes. So there we see the, the plate go on at the top um, and then I've applied some fillets just to round out the, the surfaces there. 
Once Scott has his 3D image, he then needs to process it with another piece of software to slice it up into layers for printing. Once you have a digital version of your object, be it scanned or created in software, you then put it into another piece of software which slices it up. Basically, it's cutting through at whatever resolution your vertical step will be for the printer for each layer, and then each layer is printed one layer at a time. These layers are slowly added to the build platform. Support structures are also generated by the printing software. Support structures are essentially scaffolding that help the object maintain its shape throughout the printing process. The software that runs this is really where the, the cleverness comes in because the software, you can see here the, the model that I've, um, I've loaded in, um, the software then creates all of these support structures here um, which enable the, any overhangs in the object to print um, exactly where they should be. Because it's coming out as molten plastic, if, there, if we didn't have support material holding it up, then that plastic would just droop and the whole thing would be a mess. But with those support structures in place, it can print those overhangs directly where they need to be. Scott's printer is now printing his new component layer by layer using plastic extrusion. This method is one of the most common for entry-level printers, but there are many others. 3D printing has a couple of different technologies associated with it. Fuse deposition modelling is the technology where you take a filament of material and you melt it and deposit it down in, in like ribbons, I guess, streams, on one layer at a time. There's also things like photo-cured resins, where you have a photo-curable resin which you expose to UV light in a particular pattern and use that to create the layers. There's also selective laser sintering, which uses lasers to melt powders, but typically metal powders or something like that, uh, to create tiny little droplets, which are then used to create your individual layers. So the, there's a variety of other technologies as well. Although most entry-level 3D printers, such as Scott's, primarily build with plastics, such as PLA and ABS, there are many other materials that can be used in 3D printers. We're actually finding that there's a whole range of new types of materials that are coming out in these uh, filament options, like nylon, there's even a wood material, which is about 50% wood, 50% bonding, uh, bonding polymer, rubber, you can get a brick-like material, so you can get a sandstone-like feel to an object. And this is only at the FDM level. When you go up beyond that, you can get a, a range of uh, alternatives. There's uh, metals, so titanium, stainless steel, bronze, gold if you've got the money for it. Uh, you can also print glass, um, ceramic, uh, there's most materials, any material that can be uh, ground up into a fine uh, sort of meltable uh, substrate can be then used to, to create a 3D object. Scott's 3D printed object has now finished printing, but he needs to manually remove the support structures before he can test it. And, um, and you can see here the little the towers that are um, in here that just held up the top of those, those triangle sections, triangle cutouts. And uh, it's just broken away there nicely. So, does Scott's new 3D printed scanner replacement part work? So, um, this is the old part um, of the, uh, the, the lift for my um, Connect sensor. And, um, so this is a bit stiff in here. Um, this is going to be a really tall rail, so I'll be able to use this for, for 3D body scanning. I'll just pull that out, and um, hopefully this will just slot in here. Ah, nice. So, um, so that's going to run up and down on this rail um, quite happily there now. As we can see from Scott's example, 3D printing gives us the ability to quickly, easily and cheaply manufacture finished products without the need to outsource to third-party manufacturers. This has been a revolution for students uh, at our university because they've been able to create objects that would have been far too expensive for them to create before, but now they can go through an iterative design process and, and improve their own designs and produce objects that 
are you know it, stretching the, the capability in, in engineering or in medicine or in art or all these sorts of different disciplines, giving them opportunities that they didn't have before. Printing, also known as digital fabrication or additive manufacturing, is a technology that makes it possible to turn 3D modelled digital designs into solid objects. Bernard Mead, an innovation and outreach officer at the University of Melbourne, believes 3D printing has the potential to radically transform our manufacturing industries and the way designers create new products. For design and manufacturing, 3D printing offers an opportunity to create an object in a digital form and then actually convert that into a real form. The benefits there are that you have the, the tactile experience of an object can in, in, enhance your understanding of an object. So for design, if the, the, an object doesn't fit or it doesn't do quite what you expect it to do, you can easily adjust it and then print out a new one. And the cost involved there is minimal in comparison to traditional techniques. In manufacturing, the idea of creating a particular object for just yourself versus creating it for a small number of people, if you create an object for yourself, that's you know, that's fine. If you want to create it for a small number of people and you go to a traditional manufacturer who use injection moulding and all this sort of stuff, they won't do that for anything less than, you know, tens of thousands of objects. It's not practical. But if you have a small, small production run, then 3D printing provides a, a, a nice alternative, a nice middle ground. Dom Couch is a designer for Darkon, an architectural interior lighting company based in Melbourne, Australia. Dom is already enjoying the benefits 3D printing offers to business and manufacturing. Instead of going and spending money on your tooling and then getting a sample and then having to go and change your tooling again at a great cost, this gives you the ability to make sure something's right before you spend your money on your tooling. It's um, yeah, big, big cost and time saver instead of having to wait for the, the tooling to be changed and yeah, it's a, a lot more productive. For designers like Dom, 3D printing offers a cheap and highly efficient method for prototyping new products. This is one that we just recently produced in the last week. Um, it's designed to be IP rated, so we have gasket details, we have boss details, all hidden details within this design. It's a really, really easy way to check how, how different components will fit together uh, and Checking that the details work and everything lines up, it's, it's really fast and it's really simple to check your results. The speed at which a prototype can be developed is one of the greatest benefits for designers like Dom. You, you can design your part in the afternoon, have it print overnight, the next day you're, you're holding it. It's, it's really fast. For Bernard Mead, 3D printing is about more than creating better versions of existing products. He believes that the technology provides new and innovative ways to create things that have not yet been imagined. You look at something like this, where we've got a gear bearing, which actually is a working bearing, which is printed for a few dollars, and it's using gears rather than balls. Now, this is a, a, an engineering evolution. This is a changing the way we engineer things. This little car here has wheels that work and all of this is printed in one place. So it, it, our students can start to design things that they quite simply couldn't have done before. There was just no way of, of putting something like that together. Scott Phillips owns and operates The Robots Are Coming, a 3D printing business based in Melbourne, Australia. Initially, Scott outsourced his designs to third-party 3D printers, but when the costs of the technology dropped, everything changed. Well, I started using 3D printing actually uh, about five or six years ago um, through a service called Shapeways. 
And Shapeways is um, based in Holland, or certainly started in, in Holland, um, and is a, uh, a 3D printing uh, provider, I suppose. Uh, and um, so you can upload a, uh, a design file to the website at, at shapeways.com and pay them some money with PayPal and they'll ship it to you um, once it's printed out. And that's been a really great service because um, it means it just lowers the, um, the cost of, of entry into, into 3D printing, um, you know, because you don't need to, to buy your own hardware for that. Um, and, um, and it was actually only since the start of this year that I, um, I purchased my own, uh, my, my first 3D printer. I now have three here. Um, and in fact, I've bought another one, um, which is called the Peachy 3D printer. It's very, very cheap. This, this thing is um, $100 Canadian. It was about $140 Australian. Engineering students of Bernard Meads have also greatly benefited from the cost savings that 3D printing offers. You can also print engineering components. So this was done for a robot arm where initially the several iterations were required, but to do it in metal was going to cost $1,000 for each half. And they needed, they estimated about five or six iterations and they simply don't have the money for that. So we printed all in plastic. The intention was to print the final one in metal, but we found that when we printed at high density with the right plastic, it was strong enough to, to stay in plastic. So they didn't bother printing a metal one. Because 3D printing is an additive manufacturing process, it also has great potential to aid the environment by reducing the material waste associated with subtractive manufacturing. The potential for 3D printing to aid the environment is, is quite extraordinary. When we look at what it's printing at the moment at home and we print uh, small plastic parts with support material that we throw away, it can look a little bit wasteful. But when you consider what happens when you print, when you create these objects in other ways, we just don't see the waste that's associated. For instance, when you print thousands of objects and, an ob and that particular item doesn't sell, those objects are all wasted. When we mill things from blocks of material using subtractive manufacturing, like for instance milling uh, aeroplane parts out of aluminium, we actually cut away the material that we're going to discard. The object that we want will only be a very small proportion of that original material. All that material is wasted. Because 3D printing is additive, it only consumes what it needs to produce the object. And therefore, it is far greener in terms of saving the amount that's being used. 3D printing materials themselves can also be recyclable, compounding the environmental benefits of the technology. This material can be recyclable itself. And one example that was given by Adrian Bau, one of the inventors of the 3D printer that we use at homes now, was you could, with a child's shoe, as they grow up, the shoe gets too small. So you simply take it off, put it into a machine that grinds it up into a powder, put in a couple of milk bottles, and print out a new shoe that's just that little bit bigger. So the potential to save the consumption of these materials uh, through reuse in this way is, uh, is extraordinary. 3D printing essentially gives the average person their own mini factory at home. Although there are great benefits in terms of cost, time savings and the environment, there will be downsides. Fewer manufacturing jobs will be needed, for example. And intellectual property and copyright laws could be breached. In no time, really, people are going to have the ability to, to scan an object with you know, a handheld personal device um, and, um, and to be able to transmit that, of course, anywhere around the world. Um, and to be able to, to replicate it, to be able to print it out. So, um, so there are uh, big issues in intellectual property law around um, copyrights and trademarks particularly. 3D printing is an enabling technology. It will enable you to do whatever. Now that can be a very, very good thing, but it can also be a very bad thing. It just depends on what it is you want to do. 3D printing will get you there. So for things like if you want to copyright, if you want to breach copyright where you take somebody else's design and use it for yourself, 3D printing does allow you to do that. If you want to print something that could be dangerous like a knife or a gun, 3D printing does enable you to do that. 
There are definitely things that we need to be aware of, the potential problems that can occur with any kind of new technology, and 3D printing is not, no different. The internet presented a threat to our youth with all sorts of access to things that we didn't want them having access to. We put kids in cars, even though we know that cars are you know, a danger. 3D printing should be seen in that same sort of way. The benefits that 3D printing offers outweigh the potential dangers that it presents. We, we have to be mindful of these dangers, we have to be aware of them, and we have to put in appropriate mitigation strategies to, to deal with them. Printing is a technology that makes it possible to turn 3D modelled digital designs into solid objects. To date, the technology has primarily been used for rapid prototyping in the design and manufacturing industries. But this is changing. As the variety of printable materials expands beyond plastics into metals, food products and biocompatible materials, the potential applications for 3D printing expands with it. For Bernard Mead, an Innovation and Outreach Officer at the University of Melbourne, the most important field that 3D printing technology can benefit is medicine. Right now, we can already print in titanium, which is a biofriendly material which can be and is being used in, bo in bone replacement in patients. Uh, there are other materials such as uh, medical grade nylon which can be printed on fused deposition modelling printers, low end printers, these are the hobbyist type printers, and this is also a biofriendly material which can be used implanted into a body. I've seen uh, an application actually which is um, a 3D print printed plaster cast. Um, in this case, it's not made of plaster and it's not cast, it's, um, it's 3D printed out of powdered nylon and, um, and it clamshells apart and you put the, the limb in there um, and clip lock it together and, and it goes structurally rigid. Um, so you can then wear it in the bath, you can scratch yourself through it because it sort of looks a bit like spiderweb. Um, and, um, and, and it's thin enough to, to wear inside a shirt and jacket sleeve. Um, so, um, so that's a really good application. Applications of biocompatible 3D printing are already saving lives. There was a baby recently who had a collapsing trachea. So they printed with a soluble uh, support structure, they printed a trachea support that will dissolve over months. While that trachea is being held open, it grows stronger, so when the thing eventually dis uh, actually dissolves, the trachea is being repaired. A more radical arm of 3D printing for medicine is that of bioprinting, or printing with live human cells, opening up the door to printed donor organs and other living tissue. Imagine a future where replacement body parts can be printed in a matter of hours using cells taken from your own body. And then of course there's the bioprinting, which is where we're starting to take baby steps into now where we might be able to print using human cells and print potentially organ replacement. Uh, there's a project already started which is aiming to print a human heart within 10 years. 3D printing could also revolutionise the way we think about and prepare our food. Will there be a time in the near future when our food processors and microwaves will be replaced with a 3D food printer? MIT in the US are working on this and the, the idea is that you put um, canisters, cartridges of uh, foodstuffs in the top of this thing, um, it's probably all you know, microchipped, and so the, so the machine knows what it's got. And, and it'll just say, how would you like lasagna? We can do lasagna or pizza or, you know, ravioli. Um, and, um, and so you can just select something like that and um, have the machine print it out, cook it for you, you know, it's um, dinner on the table. 
There's also a, a project where they print with a base material that is healthy. However, when it's being consumed, they print it into the shape of an object that you might like. For instance, they will print with this material into a shape of a steak or broccoli or potato, and it looks like that. And part of the reason is with older people, when they have to eat certain types of foods that aren't particularly appealing, they quite often lose their appetite. But if you can present them with a meal that looks and tastes somewhat like they actually expect, they're much more likely to eat it. It is not only the medical and food industries that are embracing the possibilities provided by 3D printing technology. The fashion designers of the world are also starting to see the potential. Dita Von Teese recently modelled a dress that was entirely 3D printed and I saw recently a headgear that was uh, created with a 3D printer. So fashion has the potential to use it for exploring new designs but there is also the potential of taking older designs but using 3D printing as a new manufacturing technique, so printing with materials that are flexible, soft and can be easily cleaned and resized and all that sort of stuff. So 3D printing gives us a new way of creating objects that will fit precisely the person that they're intended for as opposed to the current technology where we print en masse to, to suit various sizes. On a much larger scale, we may even see a day when entire buildings are built using 3D printing technology. I've been speaking with a company in, um, at the University of Southern California and uh, they are building a 3D printer that is enormous um, and prints in extruded concrete. Uh, and their stated aim is to be able to build a house in a day with a 3D printer. So they'll pour a concrete slab, set this machine up on top of it um, and set it going and it will, it will print a house um, much in much the same way that these um, machines print small plastic objects. So, um, so they're looking to be able to get a house to, to lock up within 24 hours, pretty much. Um, and, and that's going to change the construction industry massively. 3D printing technology has already come a long way in a short space of time. The possibilities are only limited by our imaginations. So, what will you do with the technology?